episode 62. You know, I start these things without a script. I do not have a rundown of things I plan to talk about. You know that. The only thing I have in front of me, well, kind of in front of me, is the point, which I'm not sure I can find. Where is it? If I can, Oh, there it is. Okay. Patience with diamonds. That's the first time I think I've finally spoiled the point. I actually don't get to it. I'm in the middle of my Watch Stand Pray 365 challenge, where my goal is to write 365, 365 word devotional motivational things within three months. Now, in all likelihood, I may not get it finished for 3.65 months. So we could argue that I wrote 365, 365 word articles in 3.65 months, which would just be cute. But I'm going to still see if I can get it done in three months. You know, the thing is this. If you look at the tweet account, the Twitter account, the tweets on the tweet, if you, if you look at the tweets and you look at the Facebook posts, they're kind of sporadic. Like all of a sudden, you're like 10 of them or, you know, five or more, like they'll just show up. That's how fast I write them. And the other thing is this. Over the last couple of weeks, I've done a lot of just organizing them. Like I have almost all, but like all, but. 20 of them laid out in order. Like I got this topic and that topic. I think I've got well over 30 of them already rough drafted. I just need to go back and edit them. And I just wrote uh, another long one yesterday, which was in the 300s. So I, I have them kind of scheduled out to kind of, you know, bounce back and forth between topics so that you get sort of a rounded trickle effect when you read them in order. But I've I've got I've got them in clear, distinct categories. They're they're they're, they're theology focused, you know, Bible type devotional pieces, and then there are just kind of general life topic advice, wisdom stuff with a few semi related Bible verses to kind of sort of maybe think more about, not really justifying anything. Um, now I know some Bible scholar is going to come. No, no, excuse me. <clears throat> Some morally inept Bible scholar, not morally. Did I say morally? I'm tired. No, I've been, I've been working really, really hard, folks. I've really, really been working hard. I've just been going, 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 going. And in fact, my, my voice is hoarse. I think it's part of the weather. We're going through weather changes at spring. But no, George, it's spring. I'm over here in Asia in the uttermost west. It's, it's already hot outside. I had to wear shorts today. I know that you're there still wearing that scarf and hat and stuff, but no, I, I think the people in Reed Rapids don't need to have that part explained by now. I mean, it, all right. So anyhow, not socially, not okay. So, so some Bible scholar who is socially inept specifically, there are lots of Bible scholars who are not, but one of those Bible scholars who is socially inept is probably going to come along and maybe biblically inept. I mean, you know how many Bible teachers don't know the Bible? A lot. Yeah. You know, it, it you know, very few of my, most of my Bible teachers knew the Bible, but I mean, they're out there. But someone's probably going to come along and say, what? You just talked about being nice to people and you gave a verse on, you know, what? That doesn't prove that you're right. Well, hello, dude. There are reasons for like giving a Bible verse other than proving that you're right about everything. Like sometimes just the Bible verse is like further reading, like, more semi-related, like if you enjoy this topic and like reading about it, you might also enjoy these. Like that's how humans work. Like every single Bible verse is not a proof text of trying to win some argument. But, you know, I'm sort of expecting my audience to know that. Um, if, you know, again, the purpose of this weekly podcast is for me to kind of go through, I mean, this is kind of the reality radio, if you will, of Jesse's life. Uh, it's, it's not, I mean, Jesse's wildlife in Asia. You got to go to from Asia with love.net and subscribe if you want to know what's going on there. But I mean, it's wild. I mean, I it's, it's, it's this Hong Kong trip. I just got off of, I mean, it was wild. It, I mean, it what you know, run off, you know, dash out of the airport, get this bus there. Uh, you know, I, I, I fall asleep. I start typing. I get distracted. I look up. 
I'm on the wrong island, but I just so happen to be right at the stop where I'm supposed to meet some guy because it was the picture that he sent me. And I'm like, that's exactly the picture. Jump up, run off. Two minutes later, he walks out the door and bumps into me on the street in Hong Kong. You know, like, and that was just the, that was just my entire life. If you want to read about that from AsiaWithLove.net, subscribe. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you though, um, th- this, you know, the, the reality radio thing here with the Jesse Steele podcast here is this is just like what's going on. And I'm keeping you posted on like my weekly desk, basically, is how this works. And I, I think that can be kind of beneficial. You know, the latest thing I'm geeked about, you know, when there's other people in the world that, that are working, it's kind of nice to know what they're working on. It kind of helps you kind of orient your own life, encourage you that you're not totally crazy. We need that. I don't know if you get together with other professionals from different industries and have coffee with them or whatever, but it's it's good to say, you know, what's on your desk right now? You know, what are you, what are you working? Well, I'm working on a computer program to do that. It's just, it's, 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 it's nice to know. It's just, it's just, I think it's professionally beneficial. This is the desk talk with Jesse. Now, I, um... No, I, I do talk to people. I do call people up on the phone um, and, and have those conversations with them. So, the latest thing that I've been trying to do, as, as I've been writing this Watch, Stand, Pray 365 thing, and I've got the topics mostly drafted, all but about 20 of them. And believe me, by the time I get done writing this 100,000 words, uh, I'm going to have come up with 20 other topics. It won't be a problem, trust me. But as I'm going through this, I'm realizing that the archetypal audience that I'm writing to, like, like you know, target audience, like, you know, when you write, you imagine someone you're writing for. You like, like a group of people, like an old couple and then like a teenager, and they all have certain personalities. Like you imagine that that's your audience. So that's just normal good media, whether it's radio or whatever, even you. I'm imagining you and I've got my idea and that's probably what you are. And, and, you know, kind of, or you wouldn't be interested, you know, if, 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 you know, if you're not related to the person I'm imagining, the imaginary person I'm talking to, then, then you, you would think this is boring. And of course, you know, probably everyone thinks it's boring at times. So the audience that I'm writing to with this 365 Watch, Stand, Pray 365 series. You know, it's a website, motivational, but it's got like a book coming out that I'm making. And the target audience for these, these devotional things, these motivationals, are pop stars. That's what I'm finding. That, that, that you know, like itinerant speakers, you know, semi-famous people. Could be a Tony Robbins. I'm, I mean, I'm writing the motivational devotional book that I would hope Tony Robbins might find interesting. And the average person might think it's like, what? You're advising us on what to do when we're waiting at the airport three days a week? You know, I'm like, do you think it's enough days a week? You think I should do five? You know, and it's like, but that's not a normal person's problem. It's like, yeah, but that could be a Tony Robbins problem. That's one of Robbie Zacharias's problems. It's like, who writes about those things? And then of all the people that are aspiring to go somewhere and do something, they genuinely want to believe that that's possible for them. Reading about it can be beneficial. So it's not totally overdone and totally irrelevant, but I'm really writing to the people that want to be or already are or in the process of becoming super, super do-doers. Like they get stuff. Did I say do-doer? I said do-doer. I'm tired and need to get to the point. The most difficult among us are the most rewarding It goes for friendships, employees, students, children, and probably every romance. Diamonds come in the rough, and only those with insight recognize them. Anyone can appreciate a diamond once it has been cut to shape. But those who treasure diamonds in the rough stand to earn the greatest reward. Diamonds are difficult. Not only are they hard and rare, Rather than being scratched, they often do the scratching. While everyone likes to adorn a diamond, only the most patient, strong, and skilled hands can help them ascend to their full potential. 
And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.